Hi, let's speak for a moment about common benign lesions. This is the list of the really the most common benign pigmented lesions that we can assess through our dermatoscope. Of course, melocytic nevi, first, first place, then seborrheicalatosis. These are the two most common benign pigmented lesions, but then of course also vascular lesions and dermatofibroma. What is the minimum requirements to, uh, to assess benign lesions? Well, in my view, we have to apply this very simple uh, couple of uh, findings. The overall architecture as the first and most important uh, criterion. So the overall architecture, the gestalt, the symmetry or asymmetry in distribution of colors and structures. And then once we assessed the overall architecture, then we have to search for specific clues in order to, uh, to make a specific diagnosis. Just to make an, a, an example, on the left side you see the overall architecture of this lesion is completely symmetric, it's very regular. There is a order behind this lesion, while on the right side there is a crazy lesion. Uh, the overall architecture is completely asymmetric in terms of uh, distribution of colors and structures. On the left side, what is the specific clue? The specific clue is the presence of a regular pigment network. That means that we are dealing with a melanocytic nevus. Eh? So order plus specific clue, network means a nevus, while on the right side, overall architecture, crazy and presence of globules and network, this makes this lesion as a melanoma, okay? So that's basically the way I'm practicing in my routine clinical work, okay? So look at this lesion, overall architecture, very regular, network, which is regular, and, uh, tiny and one color, so that's why uh, this is just a reticular nevus. Reticular nevi are among the most common types of nevi. Eh? Usually they are acquired nevi, so we start seeing them uh, in adult after, after puberty. And after a while, we stop seeing, seeing them. So when the, when the patient is, uh, is 60 or 70 uh, years old, uh, then we don't see any more many uh, of this kind of reticular nevi because this kind of nevi tend to regress spontaneously. So there is a curve uh, growing up until 30, 40 years of age and then going down after the age of 50. Okay? This is another very regular uh, lesion as the overall architecture and just one specific clue which is network. That's why this is a nevus again, reticular. A reticular nevus which is uh, more irregular in terms of distribution of the network but overall you know the lesion must be considered quite regular quite uh, uh, ordered and that's why I think that this is just a banal nevus instead look at this lesion the overall architecture of this lesion is completely crazy uh, irregular asymmetric distribution of colors and structures the network is a specific clue that we can see at the periphery of this lesion it's, a, it's definitely telling us that this is a melanocytic lesion and a crazy melanocytic lesion like this one can only be a melanoma. In this lesion, again, very regular distribution of colors and structures, tiny network with a central hypopigmentation. That means that most probably this patient has a fair skin, you know, so skin type 1 or 2. Uh, this is the prototype of a reticular nevus in this kind of patients. While most probably in this, this patient has a skin type 3 or even four, because it's more heavily pigmented, but again, the overall architecture is very regular and the network is the same. Look at this other lesion, completely crazy in terms of distribution of colors and structures, asymmetric distribution, specific clue, network again, that means this is a melanocytic lesion, so that means this is a melanoma. The second most common type of uh, nevus is globular nevus. So a nevus that is showing instead of uh, the network is showing this uh, kind of regularly distributed globular structures, brownish, grayish, and this is the so-called congenital type nevus, you know. So usually these kind of nevi are mostly seen in children and then they tend to persist throughout the lifetime and they become dermal, intradermal nevi. And we will see a few examples of, the, of this nevi afterwards. Another globular nevus with this, uh, 
this very uh, regular overall architecture with globules specifically seen at the periphery of the lesion. Again, uh, uh, quite symmetric lesion with globules uh, uh, more brownish at the, in, at the periphery, more grayish in the center, which is very, very common for a compound nevus. So brown color means junctional, while grayish globules in the center means globules which are maturating, which are, which are going into the dermis. So compound nevus. This is one of the most common phases of small congenital neva. You see globules at the periphery, brownish, so still quite superficial, while they become more grayish in the center. Uh, this is also co called uh, cobblestone pattern uh, in the center and you see also terminal hair so this is a, definitely a congenital nevus again look at how regular is this globular nevus uh, so we can be pretty sure about the benign nature of this lesion but look instead at this uh, lesion which is showing mainly globules but again look at first of all at the overall architecture so asymmetric distribution of colors and structures many colors many structures globules that means that this must be a melanocytic lesion and if this is a melanocytic lesion can only be a melanoma as I told you, with time, globular nevi tend to persist and they become intradermal. And this is one of the most common phases of intradermal nevi. They lose basically the pigment, so they become a kind of uh, elevated uh, papillomatous uh, non-pigmented lesions where you start to see vessels. And vessels in the intradermal nevi are looking like this, coma-like or large dots. Uh, but look how symmetrically distributed are the vessels. This is the, mo the most specific clue to, uh, to tell us that we are dealing with an intradermal nevus. Here again another example, you see very uh, intradermal nevus, so most probably this is a small congenital nevus again with proliferation not only of melanocytes but also of keratinocytes and that's why you see this kind, this kind of uh, yellow clots and terminal hairs. So this is keratinocytic proliferation. And again, the vessels are very regularly distributed, uh, distributed throughout the lesion. Of course, the threshold between what is regular versus what is irregular is based on our own experience. So the more we see, the more we improve our experience, the better the, the threshold we put between these two entities. Okay? Here, there is some degree of irregularity, but in, for my taste, this is a, still in the range of a benign lesion because of the, of the quite regularly distributed globules, a little bit of network, but mainly globules in this lesion. Again, this is a small congenital nevus with a little bit of network at the periphery uh, and a cobblestone pattern in the center. Eh? But look at the overall architecture, which is pretty regular in this lesion. Look instead at this lesion which is showing basically the same structures. So you see this kind of cobblestone pattern, but look how irregular is the overall architecture of this lesion. There is bluish color uh, on one side of the lesion. So definitely this is a much worrisome lesion. And this is actually a small congenital nevus where a melanoma was arising in between. So a melanoma associated to a small congenital pre-existing nevus. The third type of nevus is blue nevus. And here you see a prototype of blue nevus. Uh, blue nevi are again uh, very regular, so the overall architecture is very regular, and the specific clue is the presence of homogeneous blue color. Eh? And here you see a beautiful case. Here again another case of blue nevus, a very regular overall architecture and only blue color. Hmm? Again here, another example of blue nevus with uh, one color, blue color. Of course, you see here some kind of variation, but this is, you, can, you, you must tolerate this kind of uh, little variations. Why we cannot tolerate this kind of variations? Here you see an overall architecture of this lesion, which is much more worrisome. We see not only blue color, but we see also black color, which and the combination of blue and black color is very worrisome. 
this could be really a melanoma and there is another specific clue which is very important it's the presence of these uh, sticky fibers that means that the lesion is ulcerated so this is an ulcerated nodule with blue and black color together so this is a nodular melanoma and must be excised the final type of nevus the fourth type of nevus is this one eh? Uh, spitz rib nevus, eh? pigmented spitz, pigmented rib, rib nevus, and uh, this is a, such a beautiful morphology. Again, the overall architecture is very, very regular, but the specific clue is the presence of a heavily pigmented lesion with these uh, pigmented lines at the periphery. Streaks regularly distributed throughout the, throughout the periphery of the lesion. This is the most common phase of pigmented spitz nevus. Here, another example of a morphologically regular, regular lesion with streaks at the periphery. This is also called starburst pattern, so a, a star which is exploding. And this is the way, in the metaphoric language, uh, this kind of pattern was defined a few years ago. Here, another example of a less uh, pigmented lesion, but still you can see that the overall architecture is very regular and the pigmented lines are symmetrically distributed throughout the lesion. Instead, here you see more or less the same kind of uh, spitzoid looking morphology with this kind of streaks in the periphery, but uh, uh, the streaks are not regular anymore. You see that the overall architecture of this lesion is much more irregular, and you see that there is a, an asymmetric distribution of these streaks, which are much more visible uh, at the bottom side of the lesion with respect to the uh, top uh, right side. Okay, so this was a melanoma. Okay. So these are the four most common type of, types of nevi, reticular nevi, globular nevi, uh, blue nevi, and spitz nevi. Okay, now let's speak for a moment about seborrheic keratosis. Here, the problem with seborrheic keratosis is that the overall architecture can be quite irregular in, uh, in, in many instances. So here is where uh, the specific clues become much more relevant than the overall architecture. Because uh, if I, I know that this is, uh, this is, this is a, a seborrheic because the, of the presence of multiple comedo-like openings and multiple milia-like cysts. Milia-like cysts are seen like this uh, kind of white to yellow clots while comedo-like openings are seen as this kind of uh, uh, concentric uh, clots. Eh? Uh, sometimes we see uh, black clots, sometimes brown, sometimes yellow. So concentric, where you see keratin inside. Eh? Here, another beautiful example of a uh, seborrheic keratosis, where you see this kind of black comedo-like openings, some uh, milia-like cysts, Overall, the overall, uh, overall, the architecture is quite regular. Also here, the overall architecture is regular, and here you see mainly multiple comedo-like openings. But look also at the sharp demarcation uh, of this lesion at the periphery. This is another specific clue for uh, defining a seborrheic keratosis. Here, the overall architecture is a little bit asymmetric, but still look at the sharp demarcation of the lesion at the periphery and the multiple comedo-like openings seen as these concentric uh, black sharply demarcated clots. Here, a, a, a seborrheic where you see mostly milia-like cysts, like these white shining uh, dots and clots, but also comedo-like openings and sharp demarcation. Look, another let's say, quite uh, verrucous seborrheic keratosis, where you see also yellow keratin, a lot of comedo-like openings, big comedo-like openings, sharp demarcation of the periphery. Here, the overall architecture is not so regular anymore, but still the specific clues make this uh, lesion clearly recognizable. But look at this other lesion, you know, and this is really a dangerous lesion because this could give the impression of the presence of keratin because of the presence of these yellow areas and white areas 
uh, and there are structures, black structures, which can mimic comedo-like openings, but these are not concentric like we saw before. So this is a bad melanoma. So look, the overall architecture is much more irregular than the seborrheic doses we saw previously. There is no sharp demarcation at the periphery and no milia, but especially this kind of black structures which can be confounded as comedo-like openings. Look, they are not concentric and therefore we have to make sure and to make a biopsy. Here this is another nice example of the brain-like appearance of a seborrheic This is another specific clue for the diagnosis of seborrheic seborrheic can be very uh, showing a lot of uh, different structures you see so here uh, we have to learn the basic and the most common morphologies again here you see this kind of brain like appearance of this seborrheic also here there is a combination of findings look for the specific clues the specific clues are again here milia like cysts comedo like openings especially top left while milia-like cysts are especially visible at the bottom side of the lesion. In this other lesion, look at the overall architecture, it's really quite irregular. The specific clues are, can be confounding because you see this kind of one or two or three big milia-like cysts, but the presence of this uh, uh, islands of pigment, the presence of these vessels on the periphery make this lesion uh, much more in line with the diagnosis of a pigmented basal cell carcinoma. So I wanted to give you an example in which a specific clue can bring you on the wrong direction so we have to make sure we have to improve our experience we have to know that sometimes pcc can show this kind of uh, of structures so we have to look for the specific clues which are more in line with the correct diagnosis here another example of a seborrheic is showing a little bit of network at the periphery this is not an uncommon situation also here you see this kind of pseudo network in a in a seborrheic which can be diagnosed as such because of this of again this, the sharp demarcation at the periphery